Welcome to episode 40 of the Adornit podcast. I'm your host, Steph, also known as Adornit Steph on Instagram and Knitting Samurai on Ravelry. I feel like I should make myself a cue card because that was take three because I always seem to stumble on what my name is. It's weird because it's not like I go around as knitting samurai every day in my everyday life. So um, it's just hard to remember sometimes. So how have you been? Oh my goodness. I intended to record a cup earlier in the week, uh, but it just didn't work out like that with the boys home and quiet time was falling in the afternoon and I'm really more of a morning person. So I just let it be until a day when I can make it happen in the morning. So um, yeah, it's been month. It's like two weeks and I'm recording again. Okay, two and a half. But still, it's exciting for me to be almost where I used to be, almost at 10 days. If you've been with me for a while, that used to be my um, catchphrase, catch slogan, see you in about 10 days or so. And I used to record that often, but I'm not so good with it now. And if you're wondering, hey, you said episode 40. Yeah, I've recorded under the um, Adorn, no, uh, well, Adorn It, yes. And Knitting Samurai and her guys, Knitting Samurai plus one and Expectant Knitter. So I've had four different po podcasts over 10 years time, I wanna say. Yeah, because I was pregnant with Roland and he's nine and I started in January, February. So that makes sense. <laughs> so, wow, that's a long time. I'm getting hot already. We just started. Okay. <laughs> so for today, I have um, a couple finished objects that you were, were started and finished. Um, I have some whips. And yeah, I think that's it. Like, it's going to be a pretty concise show. I don't have a shop update going. I may, but well, I will between now and the next one, but next podcast, but I'm not, I'm not put together enough to do that right now. And what else do I normally put in? I feel like I'm forgetting something. It's okay. I'll remember it as I go because I always do. <laughs> so I'm going to have some pumpkin spice. This is, I don't remember the brand. It's a K-Cup pumpkin spice I got from Amazon and I got a box, a huge box, like a 12 by 12 by eight box of K-Cups of pumpkin spice. And so I drank them this fall till I was sick of them. <laughs> and then I just put them in the back of the cupboard. And this week felt like a good time to pull out some pumpkin spice and it's delicious again. Maybe that's why pumpkin spice latte doesn't last all year because they know that people will get tired of it. So let's see, let's start with this. This was a bed in a bag bag. Um, I'm not sure if I got the, the bedding that came in this or if my mother did, but I have had this bag for 12, 13 years, a long time. And, um, it's my scrap bag. So I put my fingering weight scraps in it. And earlier this fall, I got organized. And so currently this bag is scraps that have gone into, that have already been put into my cheer blanket. And then, so these are the bigger scraps, right? More than 10 grams. And then in these little baggies, this bag, are you know like when you have a yard or two left over of a skein well i've been rolling them into little balls as i have them left over just i can't bring myself to throw them away and sometimes it's a it's a pretty good amount of yard that's the amount of yarn that's left over not enough that i want to put it on i want to keep it on my ravelry stash page but enough that i want to hold on to it and maybe it'll come in handy for color work for an eye for something or if i do a bits and bobs or habitation throw some sort of um, two color two stranded blanket knitting I'll have these to throw in so I have one ball that is the two ply hard twist that like fiber knit bounce uses is and then I have a second ball that is more the uh, four ply more like um, desert vista dye works uses see it's not charged 
Okay. Okay, but you need to pay attention to your class. Okay, so that's what this bag is. This bag, I even labeled it for myself. This is no good for Advents. <laughs> so these are less than 10 grams of yarns that have been worked in the blanket and they're in here. So this whole blank, this whole bag had been almost full up to the top. At different points in my life it has been full, but I embarked on a um, pigskin party on their January scrappy hat challenge. So the challenge was to knit a hat with at least two yarns. That's easy. So I decided to do a color progression of blues and I pulled out all the blues that I had in there and laid them out light to dark. And this is the hat that came out of it. The pattern is the seated, I'll put the name of it over there. It's the um, seated slouch something or other. Um, it's a lion brim pattern. It's available for free. Pretty simple. There's some seed stitch in the bands. Maybe that's what it is. Seed stitch banded. Um, so two sections of seed stitch. This is stockinette. The brim is nice. For my brim, I did grab um, some DK leftovers that I had that were navy. Um, Leading Men Fiber Arts Dramaturg is what it was. And I held that double just to give the brim a little more heft and I love the way it came out. I kind of don't want to mess up my hair. I don't know where my head is. I'll go find my head. Hang on. So here's my head. <laughs> um, it's a good $10 well spent just for modeling stuff. It's definitely a child's head or a petite woman's head. It's not my head. My head's rather large. <laughs> um, but what am I going to say about this? I added in, I want to say eight or 12 extra stitches knowing that my head is a bit larger um, and I wanted this to be a comfortable fit. It's a perfect fit, spot on for me. So it did use a bit more yardage than the pattern called for. I'm not sure if the pattern had, it's knit on size fives, so it must have been two strands of fingering. It couldn't have been two strands of DK. I'm not sure, the pattern page will say what it was, but for me, I used just over 450 yards to get this hat. So it's great. It's not, um, I followed the instructions on how many rows to do what, but I did not measure my gauge. So um, while the hat fits perfectly, it's not super slouchy. It's like moderately slouchy. It's cute slouchy enough to like respectable, not hipster slouchy. So that was for me. And then I have a lot of Desert Vista Dye Works yarn left over from almost two years of knitting a pair of socks a month. And it seems like such a shame. I've knit the socks. What else am I going to do with it? Some of these colors I'm totally in love with. And so I decided I'm going to use the Pacific Sunset colorway. Um, yeah. The Pacific Sunset colorway. Here are my socks knit out of it. Those are mahogany run. Very, very, you can see more of the pattern. Very pretty socks, right? Love this colorway. Someone else, maybe Erin is knitting it or was knitting it for January. I totally got jealous and that's what made me want to cast on with that leftover in particular. I wanted to knit with that colorway. So I, again, pulled out purples and pinks and oranges and I, I my, my color matching got better as I went along. Turns out a lot of the knit picks, self striping that I have leftovers in here was a perfect match or close enough that it gave it a bit of a heathered look that I really, really like. Um, I did pull in some hidden figures. That's a darker purple, a slightly different shade of purple and black. Yep purple, black, and green. I broke off the green. I used some Peter Max, which is, these are Desert Vista Dye Works colorways, which is an orange, green, purple. So I got those in there. What else did I use? I don't know. A bunch of other yarns as well, not just all Desert Vista Dye Works. I know I used some Action and some Opal 
just general blacks. I wanted it to be kind of grayish. And I knit this. So I knit this one um, two pattern size. And I really like how it came out. It's a little, it's too small for me, for sure. If I put it on, it's the stitches are stretching. But um, it'll make a perfect gift for a young miss in my life that I think will really like this. So when I posted these on Instagram, my bestie uh, saw them and said, oh my God, I love that blue hat. And while I like to knit for her, I knit for her all the time when she asks for things. I don't like to knit for things that she hasn't knit, that she hasn't approved. I don't know that she'll use them or wear them. So when she said that she liked it, I was like, okay, I'm going to make her one. Didn't tell her, of course. It'll be like a happy spring gift or something. So I did not have a lot of blues left over after pulling everything. So I did take two skeins out of the wall. It's okay. So I'll use those for color progression and then I'll go up into a white gray. I pulled some Malabrigo, is it Rios? It's the one that's not a single ply worsted weight for the brim. So um, I think it was Archangel, I wanna say that color is. It's, it's something, I've used it in a lot of projects. I have it in worsted and fingering weight, that same color way. No, I, I threw away the tack. Anyway, so I pulled that and I just used that for the brim. So again, a real nice thick brim. Um, with LTs, I used um, Fiber Nymph Dye Works, the cheer, cheer, cheer colorway that um, I've had for a long time. I knit something with it, but I had a pretty good leftover of it. It's in the Happy Camper base, and so that was a sport weight. So this is sport and fingering. It's not as... Um, substantial as the other brims so just noticing and as I'm looking at this this looks a little smaller so I took off a pattern repeat it's not really a pattern repeat I took off I think eight stitches out of this so mine was eight up LT's was on in size and then this one is eight down so there it is so far and I'm loving it so super fun great way to use up scraps oh i didn't say this one used 518 i want to say i perhaps maybe no you know what it is why it's different this one i misread at the end that's what it was i got confused and i only did i left off three rows at the end of it and this one i did them all the way as a pattern written so it, it, this one is a bit slouchier so that's great and if you remember from last time my goal for the month each month this is one of my goals is to knit um a thousand yards a month so right there boom done the month's not even over and i've got that behind me i'm gonna get another 400 out of lauren's hat and then I'm gonna stop with the scrappy projects because I have a tendency to go on jags and I don't wanna go on a jag and make hats that are not um, really high color, like everything I want in a hat. So there's that. Acquisitions, additions, that was the thing I forgot. Well, first, mom, made me a Kibo bag. So I love Kibo and the Age of Wonder Beasts on Netflix. Like, so super love it. Like, ridiculous. I am not a nine-year-old girl. Why do I love this so much? But I do. So, uh, yeah. I had the fabric done up and she made it for me. And Magic Notions pouch. So that was super exciting. And the inside is this crackle purple. And then Steve gave me a you know we watch um, Critical Role. He, for Christmas, he gave me a jester. She's one of the characters on that. So he gave me a, a jester pin. So I put that right on it. because Those are kind of like my current joy fandoms. And then in some sort of post-Christmas madness, I don't know what prompted it, Steve went to my Amazon list and said, okay, what didn't she get? And he ordered me a set of chai goose. So that was super sweet of him and I'm very excited to have them. The, um, the ends are like 
the opposite like this was a male end and with wait is this the right one yeah and with um knit picks knitter's pride knit picks carbons those there this piece has a female end so the cords won't work <laughs> on these so i have to keep the specific cords for the chai goes in here and I had found what I it doesn't come with one extra pair I had ordered previously a set of fives a tips and five that um, I couldn't use because I didn't have the right cable cord so now I do it came with two three must be three because I'm using one uh, cables and <coughs> excuse me some ring markers because you know I'm totally gonna use those <laughs> and what else these so I think these this white bit is a cap to go on the end of a cord yes so it's it just looks different than what I'm used to but I am loving this new case that it's so compact and it fits and it just travels uh, so much better than the I've had my knit picks hard plastic one for 10 years. What's up, T? I need paper layer. Okay. Yeah. Other thing I wanted to talk about that's not really an acquisition, but I am super happy to have it done. It only took us a full calendar year, which maybe we will work on the yarn wall every January. Uh, although it may be different now that all the pegs are in, because that's what I needed Steve for was the hand strength to put the pegs into the pegboards for the yarn wall. <laughs> the yarn wall is done, except this section where Desert Vista dye work that I need to cake up goes. I was, I planned ahead, I left it some space. So I'm super excited. I had made some holes in this wall through the year. So we filled them in with different colors. This wall is my, do you like some purple yarn? Um, this wall is indie dyers. Yeah, <laughs> it's a mishmash of everything. And we tried to have this color flow from reds to purples, blues, greens, and then dark at the bottom. And then on this side, because I love to talk about my yarn wall, um, we have my workhorse. So if you are new to knitting, workhorse is a toothy, worsted weight not worsted weight fingering weight yarn that's worsted spun so it's got a little bit of air in it knits up a little faster to me and the stitches hook onto each other because it's got those fuzzies on the yarn itself that cause they kind of mesh together think about your hair when you have a knot in it or something that's kind of it's not knotted but it's that concept of the uh fibers sticking together so that's my opal and my nip, opal, nip picks, croy. Those are the three right there. Nip picks, not so much. That's um, more of a smoother yarn. Uh, we tend, in my family, we tend to burn through those for socks. Uh, they're just a little too, I don't know if it's high micron count or if it's, they're too soft, or if I'm not knitting them at a tight enough gauge. Could be. I am a loose knitter. I do knit socks on zeros. I'm not going down to double zeros. <laughs> so there's that. Um, then there's my fiber nymph. So from like here down are the ones that are generally in the pigskin party and the splash pad party hosted by Jen on Down Cellar Studios. Super fun knit alongs happen twice a year. I love them. I love the pigskin party a lot more than the um, splash pad party because it feels like I just have time to get into the flow and the rhythm with a splash pad party and it's over. So I prefer the longer knit along. So um, yeah, Fiber Nymph, Sun Valley Fibers, Holly Press Fibers. I have a few skeins of her. And then this is all Desert Vista Dye Works and Tristan shoved this in there. That's so we did move his desk after we did this. Steve's been recording. You may see some of him recording. What are you doing? Well, I'm trying to edit a recording. Oh. Uh, with some semblance of privacy, but I see that's not going to happen. What's the recording? What's the name <clears throat> of the book? <clears throat> Stories of Siegfried Told to the Children mm. by Mary McGregor. Okay.
What culture is that from? Culture? I, it's a Germanic, what would you call it? Myth? Huh? Folk tale? Legend? Translated into English for young readers uh, in the early 20th century. In this. Um, yeah, so we did move the table because Tristan's been sitting facing this way for school. And, you know, it's good. Feng shui or something to change up the way you sleep in your bed and the way you sit in your room and move your furniture. It's good for your mind. So we moved his table over that way. And now he's sitting here with the yarn wall as his background. So he's, I had to tell him <clears throat> he's in first grade. And I explain to him that you know Tris we have a yarn wall and that's totally normal for us but other people whose moms don't knit they're gonna think that's weird so you don't have to really go into a lot of detail you can just say mom's a knitter this is yarn <laughs> and, but okay it was the funniest thing so Steve and I are in here I did some time-lapse video which ugh, I would have I didn't spend enough time with the camera angle because it would have been very funny um, we started from the bottom up. That's how logically I could put it in my mind. Like I wanted to fill in with fiber nymph and I wanted Desert Vista on the bottom. And so anyways, so we, we pulled all the bottom, the bottom third of that off. And then we worked our way back up to make it neat. and I've got them sorted into piles like this is the nitpicks pile this is the fiber nymph this is the desert vista this is sun soaked he doesn't know and I have them sorted in piles and I have them sorted by color because I want generally to have a rainbow to black red to black on that wall so <laughs> he's grabbing things and he's putting them up where they make sense to go you know color value wise and at one point I was like that's a nitpicks doesn't go there and he's like I don't know what a nitpicks is and I just thought that was the funniest thing because who other than a knitter's husband would scream I don't know what a nitpicks is <laughs> so yeah the wall is done except for this corner which is fine I need to have a caking day because yeah, and I just got my 12 year, 12 month coupon from Susan, Desert Vista Dye Works. So it's, it's a free skein for completing a year and a significant discount, like 20 or 30. So usually I go through and buy a bunch. Um, over, here's a, here's a user trip, tip, <laughs> an Instagram user tip from me on yarn shopping. So, um, Someone like, well, Lisa doesn't offer everything. Fiber Nymph doesn't offer everything in her catalog all at once, but I will bookmark her stuff. Um, Susan has like 5,000, I don't know, a thousand colorways. There's so many in the Desert Vista Dye Works and I will see them, they'll come up. I think they're beautiful, but I'm not placing an order. I'm waiting till I have that big sale coupon or free skein, cause I don't need it. It's just, a, I want it. So I bookmark, it's under the, here's the image on Instagram. It is in the lower right. It's not the corner of your phone. It's like the middle of the screen. It looks like a bookmark. So I bookmark those that I love, the colorways. Like this morning, um, yeah, I went through and I saw like three colors I loved. I can't think of them off the top of my head, but I bookmarked them so that now and then three months from now I can go back. The key is to unbook them, mark them when I buy them. <laughs> so here's that. Now let's get back into the knitting. <laughs> I did show you this bag because there really is some knitting riding in it. Entirely too small for the size of the bag. I've actually been throwing other project bags in this and then this is my like carry around. I love it. So this month's Desert Vista Dye Works sock is 
not going to be on a blocker. <laughs> it is the Amadeus colorway, and I did get it in worsted weight as well. There's the Witches of Eastwick, and there, there it is over there. There's a few skeins that I'm just too in love with the color, and I have visions of hats or cowls for myself because I want to show this beauty off. I think it's gorgeous. The pattern is cabled mornings. It's a crazy sock lady pattern and super simple. Don't have to, just have to count um, every so often, like count my rows, but it's so, it's very easy. And I like the effect that it gives. It gives it kind of a waffly bit of texture to it. Um, and it does cinch in. I subbed my favorite Wendy Johnson heel. I'm knitting it toe up. The pattern calls for cuff down. So I always do that. I just go toe up, take the stitch pattern that I like and put it, sub it in, go. Um, US size zeros. And I think that's all I have to say about it. I was working on this during the first Wonder Woman movie. So we've had a few more movie nights with my parents um, this last month. And we wanted to, dad wanted to see the new Wonder Woman movie and the boys hadn't seen the first one. And so you can't watch the second without watching the first. I've seen the first. So I was able to knit on this during that. And it worked out lovely. Um, but then when it was time to watch the second, the new Wonder Woman movie, I really needed some knitting that I could be staring at my, staring at the screen and not even have to look down because I tend to lose track of what I'm doing and I would have zoomed past some of the pearls and not even noticed and knit an inch. And so I can't stand not being productive. So I flipped over, hang on, why are you so twisted? Uh... Okay, sorry, order a malfunction. Um, I knit on this. So from there up, I did the cuff the next day. But this is um, Lisa Fibernance Scrabble colorway, but it's not called Scrabble. I think it's that's not even a word. And I don't even like Scrabble. I, in fact, hate that game. But I love this color so much I had to, had to snap it right up. And then I have another one. Well, I guess I can't show you. Oh yes, right here. What's this one? Battleship, I think is another one from her game series. I think that's an adorable concept to be inspired by the colors of a game. So uh, the pattern for this is, no, it is the Vanilla Bean pattern by, I don't know, I'll link it over there. Um, yeah, so basically at Color Changes, you slip every other stitch. And I did that. I knit it as a tube, by the way. Um, yeah, and did an afterthought heel. So, there you go. True afterthought. I did not plan for its placement. I just literally said, okay, what stripe is about at the eight and a half inch mark? Okay, let me cut the middle of that. And that's where I put in my heel. So, love these. These are for me. Um, riding around in this bag. But it matches perfectly with, yeah, that's all there is to say. So socks and hats. Um, last time the cowl, I know I promised I would have more to say about that. I really haven't touched it. I, um, yeah, I'll talk about it next time. <laughs> I'm just kind of, it's in time out. That's, that's honestly what's going on there. Um, yeah, so that's all I have to talk to you about today. That's my knitting and my yarn wall. Next time I will share with you my crafty bingo update and whatever else has found its way onto my needles. So I hope you have a great, till we record again, till we speak again, and enjoy what's going on in your knitting. Bye.